Hi, Ryan. How are you? Good. How are you doing? I'm fine, thanks. Where are you at the moment? We are right about halfway between Baltimore, Maryland, and Washington, D.C., in a suburb pretty close to where the walkthrough is going to be tomorrow. So you're in the bus at the moment traveling? Uh, no, actually, we are in a hotel right now because we have a day off today. Oh, that's good, because, yeah, the walk tour is pretty hectic, isn't it? It is, definitely. And your band's tour itinerary is very hectic, too. That it is as well. And you're coming to Australia soon. Yes, and we cannot wait. How many times have you actually been to Australia with the band? Um, that's a good question. I believe my first time was in 06, and I, I want to say, say four. What's your favourite part about coming to Australia? Well, the last time, actually the last two times we were there in Brisbane, we went to the Kangaroo and Koala Park. That was really fun. And can I just ask very quickly, have you ever tried Vegemite? Oh, I, I, unfortunately, yes, I have. Unfortunately, I have not developed a taste for it. So. <laughs> okay, I won't go any further with that then. <laughs> <laughs> the band have been going since 97. Yeah, they believe 97, yes. And you've been with them since 2005. Correct. But you had a two-year hiatus, and can I ask what you personally did over that hiatus? Yeah, I actually, something that I want to continue to do uh, later on in life is do producing and mixing for other artists and bands, and uh, I kind of started pursuing that during that time. And a lot of the uh, a lot of time was spent really working on kind of like friends projects just for practice and just to kind of really kind of immerse myself into trying to do those types of things. And I ended up actually spending a good portion of time working with Ryan and Sean O'Donnell, our, our last bass player, on a side project that we called Big If. And I kind of worked a lot behind the scenes. I helped them write. I played all of the lead guitar on it, and I produced and recorded all of it uh, at my home studio in Arizona. So that was kind of my main project in the couple of years was working on that. Have you done any producing and mixing for Yellow Card? I actually have. Uh, in the last record, we had a B-side, an iTunes exclusive B-side song called Promises, and we uh, recorded the drums for those when we did the rest of the album, but then I produced and mixed the rest of the song myself after the fact. And your album, Southern Air, is due out in August. I noticed on the website you've got a video up of three of you, two Ryans and Sean, doing an acoustic version. Are you the three main songwriters in the band? We, we kind of all, we're, we're all pretty much uh, on that page of writing. I, I think you, that might be a, a correct uh, assessment of the situation, although when we all get in the room, everybody kind of contributes. But obviously Ryan writes all the lyrics himself, and the three of us kind of write the core of the music. Of course, when we get in, in the room, LP is, of course, you know, he, he does his thing with the drums, and he's one of a kind, so that's something that no one but him could do, so... Yeah, I think so. Well, Sean, Macon and LP are the only two original members still in the band. That's true. And you've got a new member just this year on bass, Josh Portman. Right. How's he settling in? He's great. He's been a friend of mine for a really long time. He actually filled in for the band in 2007 when our old bass, bass player Pete left. Uh, so he's already he already has experience playing with us. He's done a, done a good amount of touring in, in the end of 07 with us. So uh, it's kind of a natural fit for him to just kind of jump right in. And uh, he already gets along with everybody. He's super mellow, very, very easygoing, great friends with everybody, great musician. So it's been really, uh, really nice. The Yellow Card Twitter, which on Facebook, Yellow Card, MySpace, everything, you are just Yellow Card. It's easy to find. But your Twitter has links to all your personal Twitter pages. And you have a link to your cat's Twitter page, which is named after Bam Magira's dad. Correct. Why would you name your cat after his father? Uh, it's long story short, uh, my wife and I were staying with my mother um, in 2008 for a couple of months, and she had just gotten this kitten, and he, he would eat his dinner, and then he would lay in the middle of the floor, and he wasn't fat at all. He was actually pretty thin, but his stomach would just kind of stick out after he had uh, been done eating. And if you're familiar with the first Jackass film, uh, there's a, a time where... Uh, Bam and a couple other people break into their, his parents' room at like 4 o'clock in the morning and his, his father, Phil, is up just in his underwear and he just kind of is wandering around and Bam just points at him and goes, look at Phil's tummy, and it's just one of the funniest things in the film to me and my wife both really loved that part. And so we would kind of make a joke about this cat that was laying in the middle of the floor with his stomach sticking out. We would just point at him and say, look at Phil's tummy. And it kind of just stuck and we said, hey, well, we should just name him Phil because my mom actually ended up giving us the cat. And so we decided to just name him Phil Margera after, uh, after Pam's dad because of that. <laughs> he's pretty good at tweeting too. Yeah, he's, uh, he's, he's definitely good at tweeting. My wife will uh, 
put her laptop out and put his account up, and he will just walk over to the computer and sit down on it or press it. And then, of course, sometimes we tweet on his behalf. <laughs> Does your wife travel with you when you're touring? Uh, she comes out and visits sometimes. Uh, coincidentally, she's actually here right now. She just came out starting yesterday. She'll be here for about a week. Most of us in the van that have significant others will have our uh, our significant others kind of come out here and there over the course of the tour for a little bit of time. Obviously, if, uh, if I had my way, I'm sure she would be out the whole time, but unfortunately, it's just not realistic. Is that what you miss the most when you are touring, That your family, your normal life, your friends? It is, yeah, and and of course we tour so much to where this, in a way, this becomes our normal life, but being away from home is definitely the hardest part about it. Obviously, I love all of these guys. I mean, they're totally my family, and being able to play music is one of the best things that I can think of, but being gone from home, last last year I think we were gone for like two, 250 days or something like that, and it just definitely sucks to take a spell after a while. And when you do come to Australia, you're playing on Tuesday, September the 18th in Brisbane. And Friday, September the 21st, you've got a sold-out show at the Hi-Fi in Melbourne. So you've just announced a second one on Thursday, September the 20th. Is it good knowing that you've got somewhere sold out before you even get here? I, I'm, I couldn't be happier. We Every time we go to Australia, it's always so amazing. And the fact that we have that show sold out and they're adding a second one is we're all just really beside ourselves and we cannot wait to get there and play. I should mention also you're going on September the 22nd to Sydney. Right. It's just the four shows. The Van, Van's Warp Tour used to come to Australia, but it's not coming here this year. Yeah, I remember that, actually. Uh, I always wanted to, I always thought that would be cool to be a part of that. I'm not sure why they're not this year, honestly. I really have no idea. I haven't really looked into that. It's a massive lineup, actually. Are you very good friends with a lot of the bands? We are, yeah. This has been one of the best summers of our lives. We're super, super tight with the guys in All Time Low. We're good friends uh, with the guys in New Time Glory and uh, we're taking back Sunday. So many great bands. And there's a band from the UK called Yumi at Six uh, who actually just left the tour yesterday was their last day and uh, we became super, super tight with them over the course of the summer. Love to see them go. But uh, yeah, the summer's been great. It's like a big summer camp. Who is the most impressive band or person that you've met in your career? Hmm, that is a good question. I once had a pretty 45 to an hour long conversation with Richie Sambora from Bon Jovi. That was pretty amazing. Our, uh, our old tour manager has worked with a ton of huge acts, and we happened to be in Toronto when they were in Toronto, and he said, hey, we're going to go and, and hang out with Bon Jovi at this hotel, and we were all very much in disbelief. And then we got there, and sure enough, there we were hanging out with them. Pretty amazing. And what's the best piece of advice you've been given by another artist? That's a good question. Usually it's people asking us to give young bands advice. So. You've been going so long now that you're in that position, aren't you? What would you give advice then to another artist who asked you? I would honestly say to just, no matter what, play, play your instrument every day. Uh, a lot of people, you know, they pick up the guitar and they play for a little while and they'll put it down for a couple of weeks and then they'll play it for a couple of hours. And I try to say, just make sure you play every day, even if it's just for a small amount of time. And just get out and play as many shows as you can, even if it's to nobody. You know, you have to just get experience playing and traveling and getting into the grind because it's very much a grind. Does it ever feel like just work to you or is it just still a, a passion every time you get out there? Sometimes it's one and sometimes it's the other. It definitely feels like work sometimes. Not all the time, but there are certain times where it's tough. I mean, when you get stuck in an airport for 10 hours and, and have your whole travel plans, you know, uh, completely rearranged, then you're, you know, it doesn't really feel very fun at the time. <laughs> but when you go out on stage and you, you see thousands of people bringing the words along to, to the music that you're playing, it's definitely is still very much real, real passion for sure. Well, you play lead guitar and do backing vocals and are getting into a bit of producing and mixing, but do you have any other talents or hobbies that you do away from music? Well, when I was young, I played uh, soccer, actually, a lot. I played for about 10 years, uh, and my dad coached a lot of my teams, and I was at a point where I was actually moving up to playing on local regional all-star teams as well, and I was totally actually on the path of doing that until I got to high school and discovered punk rock and decided to give up on all sports and anything that could be associated with sports to go and, and listen, to, listen to punk. So. so now being on stage is your form of exercise. You don't get soccer games going with the other bands behind the scenes? Oh, it's, it's definitely a workout, that's for sure. But we actually still play soccer a lot. Myself and, and Ryan, uh, the other Ryan, are, are massive, massive soccer fans. We all, we, we follow uh, tons of leagues, tons of teams. We actually try to play as much as we can on tour because we, we both grew up playing. So we actually got some games going on work this summer with 
there's actually a band from Australia called Tonight Alive that's on the tour, and they uh, we've played with them a few times. Them and you meet six and uh, played some great games. Have you ever been to an Australian rules football game? I actually have. Myself, Ryan, Sean, and one of the crew guys we had at the time went to a game in Melbourne in '06, I believe. We went to a good friend of mine who's from there uh, just took us to a game. And, and I don't remember the names of the team, but it was actually getting pretty close to, to the end. I think it was pretty close to the final. It was one of the, one of the final games. And it was amazing. So much fun. Oh, well, maybe when you come down in September, you might be able to get to, because that's when our grand final, and that is in September. That would be awesome. Yeah. And JB Hi-Fi Online is offering signed copies of your new album, Southern Air, for Australian and New Zealand fans if they pre-order. Mm-hmm. Are you going to all be sitting down personally signing every copy? We have already on this tour sat down and personally signed, I want to say, upwards of between five and 7,000 copies of them already done. <laughs> so you're going to get RSI in your wrist? Yeah, yeah, exactly. We've we got we to take some time off after that. <laughs> Is there anything that you would like to say to your Australian fans? I think, honestly, just to please continue to support the band and, and, and check out our new music and come to shows. I mean, it's one of our favorite things in the world to tour there, and the way for us to keep doing it is for you guys to keep coming and, uh, and, and showing that you want us back. So uh, please, please keep it up, and we appreciate it. That's good. And I noticed you're actually going to Europe before you come to Australia, and you've got four shows in six days here. Are you going to have any time off other than that, or are you in and out? I'm not sure, actually. I haven't looked at the schedule lately. I think we might have, like, a day before. Uh, usually we leave, like, right after a show, so if there's any time, it would probably be maybe a day or two before we start everything up. But I don't think it'll be, like, last uh, in October when we did Counter Revolution. We had, like, five days off in Sydney. Maybe next time you can plan a little holiday, because it's a long way to come if you're not going to have any time off, isn't it? That yeah, sure is. <laughs> and Always Summer, is the new single out on iTunes and Amazon? It is. Uh, and there's actually been even a newer one in about two to three weeks. Which one will that be? It's uh, Here I Am Alive. It's uh, actually the, the official single that's coming out in a couple of weeks. What's your favourite song on Southern Air? Oh my gosh, that is really hard. Can I, can I have a tie between like two? Yep. Okay, then I would say probably the second song, Surface of the Sun, and I think maybe the last song, Southern Air. All right, so you're in yellow card. You can have anything you want. A <laughs> <laughs> third one there. Rivertown Blue is number eight. Yeah. <laughs> They're all your favourite, aren't they? They are. <laughs> That's good. And I look forward to hearing the album when it's released next month. Oh. And thank you very much for your time. And I look forward to maybe talking to you again one day in the future. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. Thank you. Bye.